Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Friday Business Intelligence Tip. Today, we're going to be talking about the SQL count function. Now, it's a pretty basic function, so many of you may be saying, why do we need to have a whole session on this? I get asked on some options related to it. So I'm going to start out with just the basic usage of the SQL count function, and then we're going to just start layering on some common things I get from there of how to improve on it and see some different things. So I'm going to pop on over here to Seek Management Studio, and we're going to start there. So uh, like usual, I'm just going to do a, a basic select just so you can see what the table is that I'm going to be working with. And so I'm going to use a table I've used in many other sessions that I've done called GL Names, which is uh, for those of you that use Lawson or Infor, uh, it's the table that they define cost centers or account units as some people uh, call them and they refer to them. And basically an account unit is like a department within a company. And so what this table is, is kind of like the master list uh, of those things. So let's say I wanted to know how many we had of those. This is where the count function comes in. So all functions in SQL, you give it the name and then a parenthesis, and then you can add arguments to it. Now what the count function uh, takes from SQL Server is how many um, or what fields am I counting? And in the case of an asterisk says, just give me a count of all the records that are there. So if I execute this, it tells me there are 190 records in that GL names table. So that's the total count. Now I mentioned this asterisk was a count of specific fields. And so you might say, well, I could put something like, I want to see a count of the account units. Now, an account unit, as I mentioned, was like a department within a company. And it's saying there's 190, which is the same exact number. So when you list the fields like this, what it's actually doing is just counting all the records. It doesn't do you a whole lot of good. More than likely, what you wanted to know was how many unique departments do we have despite the company? So you would use the keyword of SQL called distinct. So you'll say select count of the distinct account units. Now when I execute that, I get 120 of those. So there's 190 total records of which there's 120 unique account units. That means that many of the account units are in multiple companies. So let's say I wanted to see within the count of something grouped by a particular value. So let's say I want to see, I want to see how many account units we had for each company. Now you'd think you could just do something like this, select the company and the count of the account units. And if I execute that, it gives me a name that's or an error that says that the company is invalid in the select list because it's not contained in an aggregate function or a group by clause. So what you need to do anytime you want to see things grouped together is you need to add a group by clause. And I've showed this in other uh, scenarios before where we were doing some and some of those things. But if I say group by company and execute this now, it gives me a listing of all the companies and how many account units we had in each one of those companies. So you can also layer in other SQL things like order by is a common one. So I wanted to see that ordered by company. Now in my case, it came out already in the right order, but I'll do it again. So select company, the count from GL names, group by company and order by company. So this is probably the most common scenario that I see out there as far as how people use uh, the count. Now, there's one other thing that I want to show today around count, and it tends to be a conditional count. And what I mean by that is I want to see all of the companies and their account units only if it's greater than one. 
or another scenario would be something like give me all the customers that had more than two orders a count of the orders more than two or something that's conditional on the value now how that works in with the count function and it also works that way in a sum function anytime you do a group by and you want to add a condition to it there's a keyword called having and in this case we could say having account and i don't need to say distinct here because it's i want in all the account units but i'll say having account of the account unit greater than one so it's going to group by company but only in the case where the count is greater than one so it should eliminate 100 and 901 from my results so when i run that 100 and 901 are now gone so anytime you need to add a condition to that uh, group by with the count function or if you were doing a sum going back to those if you wanted to say something that was greater than a specific sum you use this having keyword so group by having now um, that is probably the most common scenarios around count that you would like um, if you have other questions around count feel free to add those to the comments and I'll be happy to answer those uh, later but that should get you around the most common scenarios around using count in SQL Server. Hopefully you enjoyed today's session and we'll try and get back on again next week and give you another tip of the week. If you do have additional suggestions, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to do that. And you can send those uh, to, to info at dashboardgear.com. So info at dashboardgear.com and we'd be happy to cover a topic for you. Thank you for uh, attending today, and we'll talk to you next week.